Hello everyone, and welcome to Books as Physical Objects, where I discuss books as physical objects. Today I have a special treat that I am very excited to share with all of you. This is the oldest book that I have in my collection, and probably the most beautiful in its age, um, even though it does show it does show its age. Um, this book is a copy of the Aeneid from the Harvard Classics series. Um, this is book number 13. This is the only book in this series that I own. I picked this up at a used bookstore. I think I paid $8 for it. This isn't like a super rare or valuable book, but it's pretty neat, hence why I'm showing it off. I guess the, the first place to start... Um, would be, I guess, to tell you how old it is. Uh, this particular book was published in 1909. So it's, it's pretty old. Um, and it's held up remarkably well. Like I said, it shows its age, but it's, it's, it's hanging in there. It's completely readable and it's intact, which is pretty cool. Can't really say that about people from 1909, <laughs> uh, but this book has survived and it exists now over a hundred years later. Um, the first thing really to look at is this cover, which is it's a very nice design, um, sort of stamped gold. And what's really interesting, I think, is the particular wear on the cover, because when you look at it, you see these these white bits and you're, you'd almost be mistaken for thinking that that is intentional, but it, it's not. Um, this is not a decorative element. This is where, or I guess the stamping came off, because if you look closely, you can see these were clearly intended to be stamped. And while the it, it's remarkable just how symmetrical this wear is, but it's not perfectly symmetrical. There are a few instances say here and here, where one side has worn off more than the other. And as you can just sort of generally see, but it's it's kind of crazy just how symmetrical they, they all of these little bits flaked off at the same time. And I, I wonder if maybe the stamp that they used to press the to press it in, maybe was these didn't get adequate pressure and they flaked off or Maybe, maybe somebody did this. Maybe somebody was bored and sort of picked at it with a pen or a pencil or something. I don't know. But it, it does add an interesting bit of intrigue, I guess, to the cover. But, yeah, the design is very pleasant to look at. We have a, a little coat of arms in the center there with the, the red, a little splotch of color. It's very nice. The spine, we have our Harvard logo. Um, Veritas, right? Um, this is clearly very worn. I would imagine that this all would have been gilded in a similar fashion to the front cover, but it has obviously been worn with age. I mean, it is over 100 years old. Back cover is just plain green. And the top edge is gilded, although that gilding has somewhat faded and somewhat rubbed off a little bit. It is still pre present, and as you can see, it catches the light there. None of the other bits are gilded in this fashion, but this this top one is um, has the flat sort of American style spine, and that is pretty much the entire outside. Going in, you just have some end paper. Um, it's made out of a sort of thicker, sort of more textured paper. I don't, I don't know what, but it's thicker and more textured, as I said. Um, here's what I paid for it, eight dollars. You can see there's a little bit of staining on the pages. Um, it is old, but you know still readable. Uh, this is the uh, Dryden translation of the Aeneid, which is really old. I don't remember exactly when it was written, but it was like written in like the 1600s. It's very ye olde, and it's done in uh, meter, well, couplets, um, which I suppose I'll talk a little bit about the translation um, in a bit, but yeah, it's not my favorite translation. It's kind of unreadable, and I have opinions about uh, verse translations. But yeah, there's there's our, our guy, and it has one of these thin 
sort of uh, picture protector pages on it. I don't know what you would call these. I don't even know when did these stop being a thing. Um, I don't know, but it's got one. And then we have here our title page. Very cool. By P.F. Collier and Son, New York. And as we said, 1909. We have a contents page. I mean, this is all sort of standard. There's a, a dedication um, that Dryden wrote, and it's very long. Um, so we have sort of, give you an idea of sort of the printing. It's honestly a little bit, um, a little smudgy on this page. Um, but it's, it's uh, generally pretty clear throughout. And then here is, of course, our <laughs> dedication to the most honorable John, Lord Marquis of Normandy, Earl of Mulgrave, etc., <laughs> and Knight of the Most Noble Order of the Garter. Very fun. So this is sort of a, a letter written to this guy, sort of talking about um, how awesome the Aeneid is. <laughs> um, interestingly enough, Virgil with an I, not Virgil with an E which is very interesting, despite the fact that, as we can see here, his name is Virgilius. So, what's going on there? Team I or Team E? Please comment and tell me your preference. Um, I'm a Team E man myself. Um, it's also really interesting that throughout it, he calls it the Aeneas, not the Aeneid. Um, I've seen the work referred to this way. I don't actually know when this particular ending uh, dropped out of fashion, um, but it is present in this book, um, given that, you know, the extreme age of this translation. It is very old. But as you can see, I mean, it's perfectly readable. The pages are in good shape. This is a survivor. Um, I mean, it's not perfect. There is, um, if you open it up to the middle here, you can see um, there's a bit of a well, not really a crack, but it likes to open to this page. It is a sewn binding, I do believe. If you look in there, you, I think you can see threads. You can see something, maybe. Um, but, yeah. So, you know, I wouldn't be super rough, but it does open up, and you can... It's perfectly readable. Um, I don't know if you would necessarily want to read it, um, because this is done in these sort of rhyming couplets. Arms and the man I sing, who forced by fate and haughty Juno's unrelenting hate, expelled and exiled, left the Trojan shore, and so on and so forth. I'm not reading the whole thing for you, but it's done in these these uh, these rhyming couplets, which is very interesting. Uh, these uh, the verse translations have, as far as I'm aware, uh, sort of fallen out of favor with translators. You can see a little bit of page damage here. Um, it's not ripped, but these are kind of deep creases. Um, anyway, yeah, so verse translations seem to really have fallen out of favor, and I think this is for more, more or less a good thing, because really, when you have to jam the Latin, in this case, into sort of an English meter, or just, you know, rhyming scheme, you really do have to sort of play with it and be a little bit loose in order to get it to fit. Um, so it's not very good as a sort of a literal translation of the text, but, but the, it is important. And I think, I do think that verse translations have a place because after all, the original text was written in verse, it was written in dactylic hexameter, um, and it does have a rhythm to it. Not the same rhythm presented in this translation, but it did have a rhythm, a musicality to it that a verse translation does uh, preserve. So you preserve, when you translate in verse, you're preserving maybe more of the essence of the work, but you're sacrificing um, the, the literal text a bit. You do have to kind of jam it in and be a little bit looser. Um, so I think there is sort of a, there's a spectrum, you know, between something like this and something like, uh, Robert Fagel's translation, which is a prose translation, which more, more or less, more closely follows the actual text in the original language, but you, you lose sort of this theatrical element that you, is preserved in a translation like this. Um, so it is sort of interesting. Translation is, is an art, um, it really is, and there are many different sort of competing um, ideas about what is best practice 
for translation, and I'm, I'm not going to venture to say whether one's correct, but there are sort of advantages and disadvantages, which is kind of interesting to think about, and owning this particular book has made me think about some of those um, differences and the different methodologies of translation. And you know, that's pretty much all I wanted to show. Most of the, the actual inside of the book is not particularly um, exciting. It's just the Aeneid. You know? Not that the Aeneid isn't exciting, but, you know, as far as a sort of thing to show you, um, this is a pretty common translation. This is a pretty uh, common one from back in the day. It's not exactly hard to find uh, Dryden's translation. Uh, we do actually, we do... I forgot to mention, we do actually get a series of illustrations in here, which is very, very fun. I actually kind of forgot about these. Interestingly enough, these don't have that sort of page protector on them, um, but there are, they are here nonetheless. Let me see if I can flip through and find some more. I do remember now that there are some. There's not many. This is not illustration rich, but there are illustrations uh which are fun there's not a ton um i don't remember but I, I do think i can flip through it for you and uh show you each of them um i think that would be that'd be good i think you know to sort of show that off um so you can see Okay, that's the one we saw already. Are there any others? So, you know, overall, this is a very interesting book. Um, I don't really think I intend to read this particular translation in this particular book anytime soon. Um, but it is very fun to have. And like I said, I, I paid eight bucks for it. I couldn't really turn it up. Um, so I think I think that's all of the illustrations. Uh, there might be one or two more that I missed, but I um, just wanted to give you an idea. So a couple takeaways, I guess, a sort of spectrum of translation, and also be on the lookout. Used bookstores, thrift stores, you can find cool stuff like this. And um, it's very nice to be able to sort of have something like this and hopefully, um, you know, share it uh with you all out there and you know hopefully one day in the in the future when it ceases to be in my possession uh somebody else um will get a hold of it but be that a descendant of mine or some other person i sell it to or whatever you know whatever the fate of this book may be um i hope um it continues to to uh inspire people to think and to uh you know have questions and enjoy the text and so on and i hope that this video sort of spark some ideas and some discussion and if anything you know i gave you something kind of cool to look at so um yeah this was that's all about all i have to say uh, like comment subscribe all that nonsense and um i will see you next time thank you and have a good one